Hi everyone, Bob Dietrich here with the ADHD Toolbox and we've got a special, special um, uh, episode today. We're talking with Lisa Solsonetti. Did I say that right, Lisa? Kinda. <laughs> Kinda, okay, well, close enough. And uh, we're talking about nutrition today and this is so, so important. You are gonna wanna hear uh, some of the stuff that we're covering today because we're gonna be talking about um, what food is optimum for ADHD uh, kids and adults, uh, what foods to avoid, we're going to give you some recipes. We're going to talk about the leaky gut and what that is and how that works. Uh, we're going to talk about um, food testing. How do you get tested for food so you know where you have uh, maybe um, aller allergies or how is it affecting your child or yourself? Uh, we're talking about a little bit of genes, uh, heavy metal testing. So all of this is going to be in today's program. Lisa, welcome to our show today. We're excited to talk to you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, awesome. So a little bit about Lisa, and I won't go into this too much because you can read it on her on the page here. But Lisa is a uh, doctor. She's a chiropractic nutritionist, chiropractor, nutritionist, author, and speaker. She owns Atlantic Coast Chiropractic uh, Wellness Center in Brick, New Jersey. Um, over the past 20 years, she has adjusted and coached patients with various health problems such as heart disease, high blood pressure, digestive problems, thyroid, hormonal imbalances, fibromyalgia, allergies, back joint pain, headaches. You can see where this is going. So she's done a lot of stuff with a lot of people. Now you can reach her at Dr. Lisa Solsonetti. That's Dr. D-R, Lisa, L-I-S-A, Solsonetti, S-U-L-S-E-N-T-I.com. And she's also the author of a book called The Overtilted Child. Uh, creating a sensational classroom for kids with autism spectrum disorder, sensory processing disorders, and ADD, ADHD. Um, she's also the owner of a Kind Gut program, uh, improving chron chronic health issues by repairing leaky gut imbalances. And we're going to have a free gift today that we're going to talk about, which is um, a uh, gut brain connection starter kit. So we're going to talk about what gut brain connection is in just a second. Um, so Lisa, you're from New Jersey. We are not going to hold that against you. <laughs> it's okay. Love people from New Jersey, and um, and you have some awesome stuff today. So let's jump right in and let's talk about food for ADHD children, ADHD adults. What is food is optimum? Like, what should they be eating that that really promotes brain health? It's a great question. <laughs> um, just, just jump right in. Really, you want a, a diet that's rich in proteins, healthy proteins, um, vitamins, minerals, and also um, healthy fats. That's really the big thing. And so I, when I work with ADD and ADHD, I always say you want brain foods, super, you know, foods that are going to balance the brain and stimulate the brain. So if we look at that, you have to ask yourself, well, what's a healthy protein? Because what you may think is a protein, I may say no. So to give you a quick list, you're gonna, you definitely want to do um, grass-fed beef. You know, you try to get um, organic chicken or turkey. Sometimes you can't get organic, but I tell moms and dads to definitely look for you know no antibiotics, no hormones. Mm -hmm. It's not as a common thinking um, on the East Coast as it is the West Coast. So some of these things may seem simple, but they're not. Mm -hmm. um, eggs, you want to look for more of the eggs with the uh, um, high in omegas because that's really what helps the brain is these omegas, omega-3, 6, and 9s. These are these healthy fatty acids, which leads mm -hmm. us to fish. Cold water fish is actually the best, and that's because it has the oils between the skin and mm -hmm. the, the meat in the fish. Nuts are great, nut butters. Um, you can also do like sunflower butters if you have nut allergies, but they're uh, actually really good. Going back to the fish, um, I mean, all water's cold to me. So <laughs> what, what, what is a cold water fish? Um, like salmon is one of the best one. Okay. It just means they halibut. have more. Yeah, halibut, tuna. Okay. Um, they're in colder water, so they have more oil to keep them warm. Got so those oils, those fish oils, you know, when you have to take a fish oil yep. tablet, yep. Mm -hmm. that's the fatty acids. So, and so if um, you're taking fish oil supplements, that's probably a good idea too, right? Yeah. I always try to promote food first. Right. And then if we need a supplement, we definitely go there. Sometimes you need both because I'm not a big fish eater. It's not my, I like fish, but it's not really my, my go-to food. Right. So if you're, if any of the foods I mentioned today that you just, it's not one of your foods, you know, right. then you might think of supplementing for something you're missing. Okay. And um, some people might, yeah. viewing this might be thinking, well, how do I know whether my child's um, uh, deficient in omega-3s. Uh, are we going to talk about that when we talk about testing in a few minutes? 
Yeah, we have a blood test for that. So okay, you, you just <clears throat> okay. bring that back up when we go there. Yeah. You got it. Okay. <laughs> um, some other healthy proteins are beans, avocados. People don't realize avocado is actually high in protein and peas. The edamame is which are those natural soybeans. Yeah. Some, some kids like to scrape them right out of the pod. Right. Um, right. And then tofu is actually a phenomenal protein, but you need to get that organic. It's like that bean curd. You don't want to buy tofu that's not organic or GMO free. So you have to be careful with tofu, but tofu is actually um, a very healthy food for ADHD. Um, so that's really cool. Um, mm -hmm. The thing that I like to tell people about the brain is to make sure that you eat a healthy protein with a healthy carb. So this is a little tricky, but it's not as hard as it sounds. If you try to focus eating a healthy protein with a healthy carbohydrate every meal, and every snack, you will keep the blood sugar steady, the insulin isn't gonna spike, and you're also not gonna get that drop in blood sugar that can make your body and your brain not focus. Okay. So, so like oatmeal, <clears throat> oatmeal with nuts or a piece of fruit with an avocado, that type of thing? Exactly, peanut butter on celery like we grew up, or peanut butter with an apple or a banana. Right. Like, think of a banana, it enters your um, blood sugar <clears throat> quite quickly, a lot of people want to avoid bananas today because they're high in fruit sugar, but it's got so many vitamins and minerals and it's one of the most perfect fruit, but it does enter a bit too quickly. So what I tell people is have some nut butter with that um, or have a couple of nuts like before or after. It doesn't have to be exactly with it, but you just want to slow down the absorption of, of a fruit sugar. I mean, fruit should not be avoided because that's where all the vitamins and minerals hang out. So that leads me to my second thing is to really focus on carbohydrates, which are, to me, carbohydrates are fruits and vegetables. Um, Cause you know, it's the anti-carb phase right now. <laughs> and really that's where a lot of the, I call, I call fruit and vegetables nature Skittles because it's where so many of the vitamins and minerals are. And for the brain, the best ones are the dark purple and red ones like um, blueberries, Asahi, um, cherries, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, things that are like dark and purple. And if you feel like you don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, you got to take like four cups of fruit and four cups of veggies a day. And I don't think that's easy for everyone. So you can get, again, you can get supplements that are whole food. Um, again, I would look for organic whole food. Um, you know, they have powders that you can put into food. You can put into smoothies that are you know, fruit powders. I know Juice Plus has them. I know um, the Synergy Company is a great company that has these. It's whole food. It's just dried, right. extracted food. So that's really good too. You, you mentioned the acai. Uh, you know, you go to these these juice bars or whatever, and you can get this acai bowl. And it's like ice cream, right? It tastes like you're yeah. eating ice cream. And it, there's must be a lot of sugar in that, right? Yeah. And so there's so, a lot of carbs. Yeah. One of my really good friends owns an organic um, restaurant, and she mm -hmm. uses the actually real acai. Mm -hmm. And she gets crazy about the other places because they're loaded with sugar, but you really want to use actual real straight up Asahi, not, not like, I don't want to put down these companies, but they've got these bowls that have a ton of sugar in them, right. a lot of juice in them. Right. Yeah. And you're basically eating an ice cream dessert. Yeah. Right. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking <laughs> about straight up Asahi, like a blueberry. It looks got just it. like a blueberry, you know? Got it. And so, but, but, but they could be mixed up into, into kind of a creamy, thing so it could be look, look similar it's just not packed with sugar right yes. and and then what kind of protein would you generally have with that that you find if you go to one of these ju juice bars what would be a good offset if you're doing like an asahi bowl at a different yeah. place yeah i definitely place. put i if i were i went only once or twice but i made sure i had like peanut butter in there i, I make sure i put a butter in there you know okay. right. a nut butter to slow down the absorption of that sugar for Got sure it. so um, something so nuts, but if you were making butter, whatever yeah, if mm -hmm. you're making a smoothie, mm -hmm. you could put an avocado in a smoothie um, and you'd have protein, believe it or not. <laughs> okay, or, or an egg. I've seen people put eggs in this. Eggs, smoothie. people put I eggs in why, them. Why they um, believe it or not, yogurt has protein in it, okay. you know? Um, worst case scenario, if you're having um, a fruit and, or a smoothie and you could just eat like, you know. A bag of nuts. Yeah, or even half a piece of chicken 20 minutes later, you know, yeah. or 20 minutes before you eat it. Got it. Doesn't okay. have to be inside the food, but great question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, what foods do we avoid then uh, if we have ADHD, or, or we we keep our kids away from if they have ADHD? Well, that's a good question. the The biggest one, and I know everybody knows this, but we have to think about it, sugar. Right. Um, 
Sugar's the worst one because you got to think about what sugar does is now it's going to spike up the insulin. It's going to make the blood sugar drop and you're not going to be able to focus. You know, when you have blood, 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 low blood sugar in general, you can't focus. Right. So, and there's a difference between, I try to tell people a banana and a Hers Hershey kiss. Like everybody says to me, well, once, once you eat something, everything gets converted to glucose. So sugar is sugar. It's really not true because a banana is loaded with so many vitamins and minerals. It's such a healthy food. It just needs a little help. Like you need to have like a little nut butter or cheese mm -hmm. with it or something. Mm -hmm. And the Hershey kiss is just empty calories. You know, there's nothing in it. It's not going to do anything beneficial for you. So, uh, it sugar is really not a great thing for focusing and getting your behavior under control or anything like that. It's really not good for anything, but we're talking ADHD. Um, when I cook, and this is the things I love to teach the parents. Um, so when they go to my website, these are the recipes you'll start learning if you follow me. Um, is I only really cook with 100% maple syrup. We'll use honey if we need to, sweeten something. I do use unsweetened applesauce. I find the sweetness of apples to sweeten things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we use like 100% pear juice or I'll juice apples. So you could use fruit juices to sweeten your cooking. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we use stevia. Um, okay. So there's... There's healthy sugars and then there's just junk. <laughs> right. You know. Understood. Okay. So you definitely want to avoid that. Avoid the sugar. Thing, yeah. The mm -hmm. other thing to avoid is dyes and coloring. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Like um, like I see these all all over the place. Jello, uh, Gatorade. Um, yes. What are some of the other things that have dye in them? The, the candies, you know, like lollipops and just mm -hmm. the red, you know, I'm just trying to give you the idea. Um, Skittles itself, I was using the word Skittles and M&Ms, yeah. like they all have the coloring, but. So, um, so if it stains your tongue, you know that you. Yeah. Just the, had the juices that these kids get, the juice mm -hmm. boxes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know what's, okay, there's a difference between 100% apple juice, but they're, I didn't even know half the stuff existed until my kids got, my kids are older now, but when they went first to school and they'd come home and say, this kid has this blue drink. And I'm like, blue like what like kool-aid or whatever you know like it's these blue drinks and i think capri suns and i'm trying to think of the names of some of the things that other kids have um they're crazy yeah but the you juices know? have the juices could be you know if they're not 100 percent juice don't, they may have dye in it yeah if you go to my website and there's a search box up there you could put in sports drinks because i have a whole big thing about sports drinks and i teach you how to make your own mm -hmm. um and that's one thing I want to stress in this video, your child could easily be eating something that's junky, but you can easily find a healthy alternative recipe. So they don't have to not have it. So my oh. kids do sports drinks, but I make them and I taught my children how to make them themselves. Awesome. Um, and so yeah. we'll talk about that next. Okay. Um, because you, it sounds like, I think you have a list of uh, recipes or just some things. Yeah. Sure. Okay, good. Awesome. Okay. Um, so sugar, you got to look for dyes because they're everywhere, right? They can, they can be in, the yes. lollipops to the, to the popsicles to the Everywhere. Jello. cereal. I mean, cereal. Yeah, you don't cereal. Think cereal. That's a right. big one, right? The Fruit Loops and all those colorful yep. cereals. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, preservatives. You got to really start learning the words. Um, I tell people to really start googling what you're giving your kids on the box or even yourself mm -hmm. because some of them are neurotoxins. So a lot of the preservatives, um, GMOs are actually not safe. You go to my website and you Google um, Halloween candy, or you or my I have a post on Easter candy. Mm -hmm. We go into we go into GMOs, we go into dyes, and there's the studies to back up what I'm saying because there's mm -hmm. there's studies in the Lancet, there's studies in the Journal of Pediatrics. Sure. So there, I have studies to back up what I'm saying, but it'll explain to you um, BHT. That's something that's in things. T TQ something like there's all these big names mm -hmm. that are in like Reese's Peter butter cups that actually affect the brain. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to start the best thing I tell to people instead of me giving everybody a really big list because mm -hmm. the list would be huge right, right. <laughs> is to really what you eat is look at the ingredients. Don't worry so much about the nutrition label with mm -hmm. the words carbs, fats and sugar. Actually pay attention to the, the ingredient label and start Googling those words and you'll see a lot of them are neurotoxins, which means they stimulate, they can excite the nervous system or they can actually bring it down. So you want to make endotoxins and there's all these things that you do not want to have with ADHD. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like back to basics too. It's like fruits and vegetables, make sure they're organic, grass fed uh, beef and, and uh, organic, um, you know, 
birds. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Be, uh, it's almost like eating off the earth, right? Yeah. It's like, who knew? <laughs> right. <laughs> So, uh, so if we stay away from the, the toxins and the, uh, the, the sugar, the, the dyes, the processed foods, uh, really those will really negatively affect an ADHD child, especially because they're super sensitive in a lot of different areas, especially food, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, when you do this, mm -hmm. it only makes the therapies that you're taking your child to the modulation, what you're trying to do with what your right. therapists are trying to work with. There's very many different therapists. I know what you guys do is phenomenal. Like I said, when I met you, I really wish I had this when my son was around. It only makes the progress that much better. You know, yeah. you're going to see progress. If your child's in speech, you're going to start seeing progress when you remove this stuff, because now the brain is like, Oh, I'm, 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 I'm working, <laughs> you right. know? Yes, absolutely. Um, okay. And so these, these, uh, uh, things can be toxic to the brain and we want to swap them out. So we've talked about what to eat, what not to eat. You've said you had some recipes. What are some of those recipes? Okay. There's a few in the starter kit, but I give you links in the starter kit, but the okay. best thing that's what we're going to get at the end of the program. Yeah. In fact, below this is a link to that starter kit. That's a preview to this free gift, but we are going to talk about that right now. So tell us a little bit about the, uh, the, uh, the recipes. And, and okay. The starter kit. Um, and if you go to my website, there's even more recipes there. It's where I'm kind of going to lead you. Uh -huh. um, and also, just so you know, because when this will be in this, this is all in the starter kit for you, so you don't need to go crazy at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, my Facebook page has cute little videos that we've been making that are like 30 seconds long of really healthy recipes. The website has, you know, the printable recipes and it has even more. Instagram has it. So there's a lot. If you, if you follow me, there's a lot there. But for example, Nutella seems to be a very popular when the kids come in my office, they're addicted to that. They love Nutella, but Nutella is really high fructose corn syrup. So I've taught parents how to just make homemade Nutella. And really what it is, is just nut butter, right? So you could, you could, you can make almond nut butter. You can make peanut butter, whatever you want to do. And you're going to add chocolate, unsweetened chocolate, and you add maple syrup to sweeten it. Mm -hmm. And we've done this to kids, the parents, the light bulb goes on in their head, they get, or, or they get crazy because what happens is I've had a mom whose son is obsessed with Nutella. She, t you know, brought me in an empty Nutella carton. <laughs> she put the homemade Nutella in it, yep. closed it, served it to him, and he ate it like it was nothing. And she was right. so mad because she's like, if I make homemade Nutella and put it in a dish, he won't have it. So yeah. I try to tell parents, they do manipulate us, they do play us, but I don't think there's ill intent. I don't think a child gets up in the morning and says, hey, I'm just gonna you know, get my mom all mad. I think what happens is they have a perception and they kind of get stuck on that perception. Sure. So he was just perceiving like the Nutella has to be in this thing that you give me, right? So right. that's how he wants his Nutella. Right. So sometimes I just tell parents, yeah, the behavior, the, uh, the effect is they are kind of playing us, but they don't mean it. Yeah, they're used to what they're used to. So right. we just have to take the recipe and change it up a little bit. Right. So there's a recipe on there for chocolate chip cookies and everyone goes crazy and adults go crazy. Like if I don't bring this to um, your house, if you had me over, or if I didn't bring this to, let's say um, um, a mom's group thing they, they get mad at me. It's all it is, is bananas and oatmeal and little chocolate chips mixed okay. together and baked for 15 minutes. It's phenomenal. Yeah. Throw some peanut butter get, in there, you get some protein, you, right? And then you do Right, you can change it up how you want. Yeah, awesome. awesome. And the funny thing about that is you get guilty after like four little cookies and then you're like, wait a minute, I just ate banana and oatmeal and like chocolate chip. What am I right. so guilty about? Right, <laughs> you know? right. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, um, um, so you got a ton of recipes on your website and th this yeah. is the type of thing. I mean, we can go through this for another hour um, yes, or, or longer, can. all day probably. But the point is, is that, there are ways to create recipes and you have a ton of them on your website. You're going to give some of them on the, the link below. Um, and this is the way you can get creative as, as parents to help your kids overcome the cookies and the Nutella and the cereals and all this other stuff that they're yeah. eating now and make it more healthy. So they don't go into this, you know, so, so you're basically making a healthy brain. You're, you're, yes. Yeah. Balanced you're helping brain. Your, balanced brain good um so speaking of a balanced brain um you and i talked about this i don't think most people that are watching this understand uh anything about uh, a gut brain connection i don't think they've ever heard that term before because i hadn't heard it um 
<clears throat> and it has to do with the leaky gut. Some of us have heard about a leaky gut, but we're not sure what that is. So can you explain about this leaky gut? How, do, how does that happen in children so young? Why does, <clears throat> you know, I, I've heard about it for adults, but why does it happen in children that are young? And then what's this gut brain connection you're talking about? Okay. Um, I came across it years ago because my son is, um, has autism spectrum disorders. It was right. originally diagnosed as Asperger's, but now today it's autism spectrum disorders. And ADHD is a component of that. Mm -hmm. But the point was, um, I was being told like, you can't have gluten, you know, he shouldn't have dairy, you mm -hmm. know, try this, try that, try this, try that. And I started going to nutrition seminars because that's my background, because right. I am a scientist too. And I wanted to understand, well, how does we get into the gut and go to the brain. I mean, we, it really goes into the blood and out the stool, like, you know? So right. I'm like, how does it, it's supposed to go out, not up. So I was right. like, how does we get into the brain and cause, you know, in, in a, in a inability to pay attention, you know, inability to behave or mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. or sensory anxiety. Right. So, you know, I, going back years and years ago, I heard about the gut brain connection. So what it basically, and today it's actually the gut body connection because I'll explain that in a minute, but the gut brain mm -hmm. connection is basically the body inside the gut attacks food proteins. So you eat a food and it will actually not recognize the protein down to the DNA protein peptide structure mm -hmm. and it will attack it. And when it attacks it, it's an immune system attack going on in the gut. 80% of our immune system is actually in our gut. So it's a T cell attack, meaning that these are the cells that attack. When you get a cold, you get a flu, that's what happens in your immune system. And what happens is the body thinks it's foreign. It thinks it's an antigen. It thinks so it's trying to protect you. And so it attacks it and it gives off antibodies, right? Mm -hmm. And that through our testing, which I know we're going to talk about in a little way, that's what my testing looks for is the antibodies. Mm -hmm. But if you back up a second, when you're attacking these foods, you don't really know it because it's on a lower level than a food allergy would be. This is called a food sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And so it becomes a chronic thing because you might just keep eating it. And it releases some bad things. It releases histamine, which actually can cause, like what you, you and I were talking about before, you can get some skin rashes, right? You can get congested. So the doctor prescribes like an antihistamine type of medication. Right. You're just really producing a lot of histamine in your body and your gut. And so your right. body's having a symptom, right, of a, a skin rash or something like that. Mm -hmm. It also releases cytokines, which I tell people to think of a Pac-Man, you know, that little guy that's like, Arr. yeah. And what he does is he eats away at the cell walls and he can poke holes in the wall and cytokines can leak out. And when they leak out, they can go anywhere in the body and they can create inflammation. So they like to cross, they, you know, inflammation can actually get into the brain and affect the brain. So that's how something like wheat can actually create such a storm in the gut that can actually get out and travel into the brain. Um, through and the that's blood the, system. Through yeah. the blood system. The other aspect of this gut-brain connection is that when your body is inflamed like that, your gut is having a storm, it doesn't really focus on producing neurotransmitters, mm. which um, actually are produced in the gut too. Right. Serotonin, dopamine. Yes. Yes. So think about that. You know, now you're, now you're having a storm in your gut, your body, your brain needs the uh, brain foods we've talked about. And it also needs, you know, neurotransmitters. And now you're just not getting either one of those, you know, because right, right. your body's in disarray. So, so that's the whole story. Yeah. It can cause depression. It can cause, you know, um, a, a number of different uh, situations mentally. Yes. Uh, you're not getting the neurotransmitters. Exactly. So when, People with anxiety, sensory, ADHD, all those components come to me and they say, how could you help me? I go right to the gut and I'm mm -hmm. trying to do three things. One is to reveal what their triggers are, what, what, what's their gut attacking, right. which we do through lab testing. Two is to repair the damage that's in there that the storm created. Right. And three is to restore it because your gut is made of microorganisms, which are actually bacteria. So we want to make sure that we have good bacteria in the gut. We have a healthy flora. Flora means all the different species of bacteria. And that's and like so probiotics. That's what, probiotics. That's what probiotics do. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. probiotics, will they help stop it or do they help um, repair it? They will help restore the flora. Think restore. about okay. the soil. Think about a garden. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever gardened, but the, the three years I had the best amazing garden was when I had a landscaper do the soil and I don't know what he did. He said he aerated it and put all these minerals and stuff in it. I had the best garden. So the healthiest 
soil gives you the best garden. Right. The same with your gut. If you have the, the, the healthiest flora, mm -hmm. you're going to have health. You're going right. to be healthy. Right. And, and probiotics you, help that, but also certain foods like yes. fresh foods, uh, fruits and vegetables can also help improve. Yeah. The, okay. the, um, the dark vegetables we talked about, the, the purplish ones, the blueberries, mm -hmm. the cherries, mm -hmm. um, the raspberries, the strawberries, they help the gut. Um, also, root vegetables. Those right. fall vegetables, I don't know how it is out there, but that's the big farms right now here. Right. would be you know, your cabbage, your zucchinis, your root vegetables, stuff like that, your fall type of vegetables, your uh -huh. rutabagas, things like that. They actually help the gut. Um, and I actually have recipes to help you um, learn how to use those foods in health. You know, you might be like, well, I don't like cabbage or I don't like this, but we can right. put it in meals that are, are yummy, you know? Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. uh, cabbage is delicious in soup, right? Yeah. So that's a right. good idea. Okay. So, yeah. um, so if I, let's say, you know, I have a skinny kid, right? He's like, this kid's a rail. It's, he's, he doesn't have any gut problems. Is that, is that true? Is it? Oh, gosh, no. No. So, okay. So it, it doesn't matter what's how big or small your kid is. They could have gut problems. It's not a matter of how they look. It's a matter of what's inside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I'm in like a field that we don't really focus too much on symptoms because mm -hmm. we look for cause. Mm -hmm. But in this case, if your child's having symptoms, they usually start off with digestive. So if they're constipated, diarrhea, they have stomach pains, gas, bloating, cramps. Um, it also can go into things like skin like eczema rashes things that you're just like what what is this why is this going away um mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. but the leaky gut can also go further into like migraines and i've helped we've helped people with polycystic ovary syndrome thyroid problems and migraines headaches like so there's lots of stuff but just in general a skinny kid that's having digestive issues most likely has a leaky gut um, somebody that's in depression, anxiety, or something like that, that could be a cause too. So that's why we look at the gut. But I just want people to understand one thing. I mm -hmm. always say skinny doesn't equate healthy because the American thinking is that we all yeah. have to be thin. Right. And when I look at thin people, I, 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 because I've done so much vitamin testing, those are the ones that usually come up very deficient because they eat the same thing over and over. They right. don't have a nice variety of diet that a heavier person would have. Right. So um, it doesn't equate health because you're thin. No, that's so good they, news for me. <laughs> yeah. Heavy, when you look at a heavy person, I usually oh. find more cardiac issues. You know, like more, you know, Liver, the obesity brings the high blood yeah, pressure, diabetes, the cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Understood. So yeah. let's say you have um, a leaky gut or you have symptoms of a leaky gut. Uh, is there testing to figure out if you really have a leaky gut or is it just better to just handle the symptoms because it's like it's you know, you're eating healthy anyway, so you may as well just change. So know. we have, we have testing that actually um, does determine if you have a leaky gut. Right. Um, okay. So it's a blood test. And what they look for is there's certain structures inside the cell wall uh -huh. of the gut. Mm -hmm. And when the gut's inflamed and it's being attacked, these will leak into the blood. Mm -hmm. They're called actin and um, lipopolysaccharides. Mm -hmm. And the, we find them in the blood, then we know you have a leaky gut. The lab will actually okay. tell us how much is in the blood, like if it's a low level or a high level. So I have a lab test for that. The other test we do have is a food sensitivity test, which you and I were talking about. Is right. right. We can so see what your, if your body is actually attacking foods. Right. Awesome. So, so let's jump into this testing because this is so important, it sounds like, because um, uh, not only can you can test for a leaky gut, but you can test for a couple different things. So one of the things we talked about was um, testing for uh, sensitivities, right? So what is the sensitivity and, and um, what is that test like? Okay, a sensitivity is testing for, um, we call them IgG and IgE antibodies. So what that means is if the body was attacking, let's say an apple, the, mm -hmm. the, the protein structure of an apple, right. the body's gonna produce an antibody. Right. And so when we draw your blood, we send it to the lab. The lab actually looks for the antibody. Oh, and mm -hmm. our test does over, it has over 150 foods. So it, I get the result back. It'll say you either have the antibody or you don't. And it'll tell me if it's low, mild, or hard, like how I'll know how much too. So we can see actually it's, 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 I, I think it's exciting because I'm a scientist, but like you're actually mm -hmm. seeing if the body attacks the food, it does or it doesn't, you know? And so if it's attacking it, we want to remove it and try to stop that storm. 
Right. And so there's, I think you said there was like 150 different foods it tests for, right? Yeah. And, and my, I, the first thing I thought of was like, there's thousands of foods out there, but, but yeah. then when you break it down into the basic foods, right? So right. there might be like lots of, lots of nuts, but nuts are in like a lot of things. Yeah. Right? And there might be lots of wheat, but wheat's in a lot of stuff. So, um, so it's a hundred different foods. And once you figure that out, then you can, you can start avoiding those foods that you have sensitive to. Is that right? Yeah. I love the list because if you end up with 150 foods and you have to, let's say, avoid 15, that means there's a hundred, you know, 30 something other foods you can have. Right. So a lot of people focus on like, Oh, I can't have these 10 things or I can't have these 20 things or whatever it is. And I'm like, but look at all the other things you can have, you know, right. and let's focus on recipes that you, of things you can have. Yeah. Well, so let's hope I always look at the positive, you know? Yeah. Let's hope it's uh, chocolate and oatmeal and peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> that, you, that you can have, right? Yeah. Right. That you can have. Um, so, so you have the food sensitivities. Those are a blood test. You have a leaky gut uh, testing for the test. actin. That, that's a blood test. Um, you have a food, uh, then you have a food additive test, right? So that's, yeah. that's new. You were talking about, tell us about the food additive. Yeah. Test. So I just have to let you know, my lab rep came and handed to me in person because she wanted to see my face Right. because I deal so much with autism that I was just like, I am speechless. I'm never speechless. I'm a chatty, chatty girl. And I was like, you, you, you mean you can, you can test additives. And if your body's attacking them, she's like, yeah. So I was like, gosh. So emulsifiers, surfactants, dyes, coloring, flavor enhancers, um, pesticides, um, glycophosphates in this test. It's yeah. insane. Right. It's uh, gums and thickening agents, um, right. sugars, all the sweeteners, MSG. good sweeteners and bad sweeteners, MSG, polysorbate 60, yeah. the red dye, the red 40, all of it. Right. So I get goosebumps. I'm not even kidding you because the, I, you got to understand, I did this all with my son without any testing, knowing nothing and just trial and erroring on him. That's how I created the leaky gut program that I have was just right. practicing on him and, and myself because I had irritable bowel with all the stress. Right. So this testing is just fantastic. If I could have known, like it could have cut out a lot. Like I, you know, you give him a red, you're giving him all this red dye, but you can't give it. I mean, e elimination diets are really, really difficult. So the lab testing is just, I think, yeah. Undry. Oh, it is so difficult. And my doctor won't even do it. And you and I talked about that before the show is that my doctor wouldn't even test me for this stuff. And you were saying, because insurance doesn't cover it, right? Right. So, so that's, it's a, to me, it's a positive thing. But I know when you tell people, oh, insurance doesn't cover this, they get mm -hmm. upset. They're like, oh, oh, no. But yes, I wish our country covered this. Yes, for sure. But, you know, when they do, when they get involved, they get very nitpicky. And so when I asked my medical friends, like, why don't you do a full thyroid panel or why don't you test for um, food sensitivity? They're like, insurances aren't going to cover it or they'll only cover one portion of it. And then the patient gets hit with all this stuff. Right. So our cash prices are very affordable. Like I was telling you, a hundred bucks, 150 bucks for a test. I mean, some of them are a little, you know, they could go up to about 400, depending upon the plethora of things you order. But it's not going to break the bank in the sense of what, if you went through insurance, their price, they, they, they shoot up the prices on things. Right. So, um, so this is a small investment uh, to know what's going on with your child and how you can help improve their behavior yeah. and, and their, their overall, you know, functioning. Yeah. You know, this is awesome. Yeah. Um, so food additives uh, and additives are in everything today. So knowing what additives to stay away from, I think would be a huge benefit. Yeah. Um, you also that test said a $150 test and it's a big list. And to know if you're, you know, it's really, there's so many things inside foods. I have people that swear, like there's something in a food that I can't figure out, but it's, it's bothering me. And I'm like, do this test and you'll figure it out. It's like right. 150 and, and, bucks. Right. Right. And we all know kids don't like to get shots. I mean, nobody really likes needles, but, um, but sure. these tests, you can get one blood draw and do all of these tests. Right. Yes. So, so yeah. what a great way to just do it once, find out what's going on with your child and make a bunch of adjustments and watch, watch the changes happen. Yeah. Awesome yep. stuff. Okay. Another thing we talked about was MTHFR. <laughs> and uh, MTHFR is a gene, right? It's one of the many genes that are identified in the body. Tell us about that, um, the, the MF, MTHFR gene yes. and... Um, and what is, what's happening there? You mentioned something about mutations and stuff like that. What's, what's going on with that gene? 
And why is it important? Yeah, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's basically responsible for having an enzyme mm -hmm. and we, 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 ha we should have it. And what the enzyme does is help us break down what's called folic acid into folate. And mm -hmm. folic acid is in a lot of the foods. It's in some of our supplements. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in some of our, you know, our medicines. We give folic acid to pregnant women, mm -hmm. for example. So that's, that's what we're talking about. Well, why if do we you, give it to pregnant women? They do it to prevent neural defects because a folate deficiency would create a neural de like a, a defect. Got it. Okay. But the, the, the irony in this story is if you have this MTHFR mutation, mm -hmm. which means the gene has got is a little messed up mm -hmm. and you get it from your parents. You can have up to four variations of this mutation. So you can get mm -hmm. two from your, your mother and two from your father. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you can have up to four mutations. The more mutations you have, obviously you're at higher risk for these issues that this gene can, this gene mutation can cause, which I'll get to in a second. Mm -hmm. But my point was that it's supposed to convert folic acid to folate, which is the natural form. That's the body. That's the form the body recognizes is folate. And then folate is needed for lots of, you know, processes in the bodies. Right. Primarily what's really important for it is um, B12, B6. It affects homocysteine. Um, I don't, I don't know. Does that background noise? Can you hear it? Is it loud? There's the door. No, it's open. Fine. Yeah. So, um, so you can have problems with something called glutathione, which is actually important. You need mm -hmm. glutathione for detoxification to get heavy metals out of your body. So you can have problems. You know, if you're not, if you're low in B12 or B6, again, that's the nervous system. If you're low in glutathione, that's your detox system. Right. So this gene's important to have. Um, it's one. It's a test one once in a lifetime. You uh -huh. either have it or you don't. And then if you have it, we just go through some nutritional changes that you need to make to make sure that you are getting folate and B12 and B6 and glutathione. So is that got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So um, if you, what are the symptoms if you, if you have this gene mutation? So it's, it's not really a symptom, but what it does is it, it appears mostly in, in the community of um, depression, anxiety, bipolar, sensory, um, ADD, autism, right, right. Alzheimer's brain. brain. Right. So um, they, these, that's the community that, um, that's the community that it's really prevalent in. The symptoms that you're saying means you'll be at higher risk for, let's say a folate deficiency or B12 or B6. Right. So th those deficiencies look like fatigue, being tired, can't focus, right. problems with weight, things like that. Right. Um, homocysteine would actually be increased and those symptoms would look like high blood pressure, diabetes, um, blood clots, things like that. Um, glutathione would affect the ability to detox. So then we would see heavy metals in the body. Got so it. those would be the symptoms of these deficiencies or these toxicities. Got it. Okay. All right. Oh, actually, so infertility is actually a sign too. infertility. Understood. So very important to understand if you have this gene, and even if you're not showing symptoms now, you'll be showing symptoms later in your life at some point, possibly. Yes. So, so you'll want to know um, if, uh, if you have this gene. And, uh, and what do you do if you do have the gene? If you have this gene, you want to avoid folic acid mm -hmm. at all costs because you can't break it down. And what's in folic acid? I mean, where, where do you get folic acid from? So when you look at a vitamin, the number one set, the, the number one place folic acid is is in the mm -hmm. vitamins. So when you're mm -hmm. looking at a multivitamin, you turn it over, it'll say folic acid, right? Uh -huh. So you want to make sure that that says folate, mm -hmm. or what we, we we do now is we call it methyl. It'll be L-methylfolate, which means that it's already been broken down. That's just the fancy chemistry form of of a folate that's been broken so down. Folic acid, if it's there, you want to avoid it. Yep. Uh -huh. That's why sometimes I'm important because I will lead you into the right direction because it gets confusing when I say go look for methyl L folate, you know, like, yeah, what is that? totally, totally. Yeah. Or, or send yeah. me a picture of your ingredients and I'll tell you, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, go ahead. No, folic acid also can be in um, cereals and grains, you know, it's in breads, like they put it in. That's why the ingredient part of the packages are so important. Um, it's fortified, so it could go in. It's synthetic. Um, also, like I said, they give it to women during pregnancy too. Um, when, so this is interesting. 
and it, it, it's a little bit of a story off the side, but I had a patient that couldn't get pregnant. And when they're, when they go through infertility treatment, they up their folic acid, which actually she wound up being MTHFR. So I took her off the folic acid and she got pregnant. So it was really causing the problem in that wow. case. So wow. yeah, it's really interesting. MTHFR has a huge, it's new, it's cutting science, but it's, it's real. And right. it makes me think of how many more genes are out there that we don't know about. Right. Right. Or, yeah. And if you don't want any more kids, make sure you stay on folic acid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so, so very important to know if the uh, MTHFR gene is um, mutated and if that's an issue for you, so you know to stay away from folic acid. Very important to uh, know where folic acid is as well. Um, you had a, another test for vitamin screening, right? Oh, yeah. How does a vitamin screening work? So we have a test that tests over 30 vitamins and it's unique. It's called functional nutrition or medicine. Right. right. Um, it's called the micronutrient test, but it's in functional nutrition and medicine doctors using it. And it's different from the one that you would get in the medical world. And again, mm -hmm. here's what we're talking about. The medical world's mm -hmm. never going to test over 30 vitamins because it's, it's too expensive with insurance companies. Right. The, the pricing that they do and the things that they charge are just out of control. Right. But if they were just to test, let's say your B12 or your vitamin D in the medical world, they just mm -hmm. look at the liquid part of the blood, which is called the blood serum. And what's floating around in your blood for 12 to 24, uh, 24 to 48 hours since you got your blood drawn. Right. So Bob, if you got your blood drawn like um, two days ago and I get my test back, your test back next week, it's mm -hmm. kind of irrelevant, right? Mm -hmm. Unless we just kept taking it every week and then we see what stays low. Mm -hmm. This test actually looks at the cellular function. So it looks at the white blood cells and the red blood cells inside mm -hmm. the blood. And mm -hmm. that goes back four months. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's a little more quantitative in my, my eyes because yeah. again, if you got your blood drawn today and I looked at your blood results in two weeks from now, it's still good, right? right. And it's important because this is where all the vitamins and the minerals should end up inside the cell. So it's looking at the cells. It's gonna, are, are they functioning? What are they deficient in? What do they need? Right. So it's really so, cool like that. So could this be either you're not getting enough vitamins or you're not absorbing them, either one of those, or, or is it yeah. usually you're not yeah. absorbing it? It, it? Well, it's going to tell me that your cells are deficient. So yeah, you wouldn't be either, you, either they're not absorbing them or they're not eating them. You're like, they're not eating the foods that have the vitamins in them. Right. Um, and then you have you ways me, to handle that. If right. I said you were low in something and you're like, I eat that, I eat the foods with that all the time, then I'd be like, all right, we might have a resorption problem, which a leaky gut could cause. Um, okay. The other problem is you could be eating too much of something. You could be toxic in something. I, I know it's rare, mm -hmm. but I've seen it. I've seen it's, it's very common to read an article on Facebook mm -hmm. or, or Google and it says, right. hey, I should take more vitamin D or I'm not feeling well, I should take this or for attention, I should take a B vitamin. And right. so people just start taking vitamins, not really realizing that that's not what they're low in. So you can get too much of a vitamin. Understood. You know? Okay. Awesome. And, you know, the last thing I'd, I'd like to talk about, because I think it's important, is, um, is detoxing of heavy, heavy metals, right? You can get yeah. heavy metal detoxes uh, or heavy metals in your system a number of different ways. Um, there's this, uh, there's a big push right now with vaccines and stuff like that. We know one thing that vaccines do have heavy, heavy metals in them. So, um, and different kids respond to heavy metals differently. So detoxing heavy metals is important. So can you talk about the heavy metal detox, um, test or the, the, the heavy metal test and the detoxing of the heavy metals? Okay. Yeah. So, um, we have a urine test. So this one's not a blood, it's urine. It's okay. okay, awesome. Yeah, okay. perfect. So that's, that's, you definitely have no reason not to get this. Yeah, it's, it's a special. urine test. Right. Um, we would send you the kit and then you're going to do the test. Of mm -hmm. course, I'll explain how you do it and then you send it in. Right. Um, but it's really cool. It's a 24-hour collection and they're looking for heavy metals and there's a whole list of them. And yes, aluminum and mercury are on there, but there's a bunch of other ones. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so basically it's just going to come back. You either have it or you don't. And again, if you have um, a, a certain metal floating around in the body, it's going to give you the level, like if you're at high risk for it or whatever. What happens with metals is they're in the body. If they're free floating, that's actually a good thing because it's easier to, to detox. Mm -hmm. But some of them attach to tissues. And what we're finding in studies is that kids with autism and brain issues, um, that they find high aluminum and mercury in them, right? 
Um, they've looked at brain tissues and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I know that that was research that just came out. Um, I think it was like last year, there was a couple autistic studies right. about this. Right. Um, and the sources you can get heavy metals from are definitely going to be, you know, you obviously get it from food. We got our soil, we got our air and water. And but fish, fish more and more nowadays, right? Yeah, fish. Um, mm -hmm. And but vaccines is a big thing too because we're giving seventy-two doses of vaccines, and each vaccine has these metals in them. Right. And it does. I, I like I said to you when we were talking about this. I have no problem asking why. Why can one kid? you know, you could have, you could raise three kids in the same environment and one child can't, gets injured by a vaccine and the other two don't. Right. Right. Or by heavy metals. By, right. Heavy metals. Right. So that's, that's the why, why did that right. child get harmed? And uh -huh. it could be because they have MTHFR and, or they have a glutathione deficiency or their body just can't detox the metals for whatever reason. And so. Um, now, do they find when you detox the metals, that um, you're able to see any kind of recovery? Um, yeah. Um, improvement from? So I do more of a light detox. I uh -huh. do more of smoothies and we do um, natural detoxes. Mm -hmm. But if I have, like I said, I have a community of nonverbal kids and the moms are just amazing. And mm -hmm. so I've seen them do um, collation. I've seen them do like DSF, D, like uh, these supplements that are kind of heavier mm -hmm. that I think they should do under like a medical type of supervision because mm -hmm. you can't get sick and you're real, they're really rough on the kids. But I've seen these kids start speaking. I've seen these kids start approving as they get rid of metals. So I don't do the heavy detoxing here because I personally and professionally feel it should be under supervision of medical. Um, we do the lighter detoxing. Got um, which Got is, so, but my answer is, yeah, there's definitely, I've, I've seen clinically the, them come back in and doing really well. Got it. So having a heavy metal detox uh, test, and which is just a urine test, is super important because it could tell you a lot about what's happening. If it's high in heavy metals, then you um, might want to consider seeing a medical professional for a detoxing. Situation. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, Lisa, this has been like um, a lot of stuff. Uh, I invite <laughs> no, you, if you're viewing this program, uh, go back and listen to it again. She, uh, Lisa's just given us a wealth of information here that we can use. And you also have a free gift for us. So, so let's explain uh, um, to our viewers here what you're, you're gonna, giving them today that they can use um, as part of the toolbox. Okay. I created what I call the Gut Brain Connection Starter Kit. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to help you guide you through this process that we talked about today. So leaky right. gut and how to balance the brain. But basically really what I want to guide you in is, is how to start cleaning up your food choices. And the one thing I want to stress before I get into this is um, even if it's not working, if your child's five, eight, 10, even if you're 22, it doesn't matter what you age, age you are, but if you just keep doing it. Because I try to tell people, my kids fought me. You know, my kids weren't easy doing this, but they mm -hmm. are now like two in college that actually eat healthy. And when they call you up and they're cooking and they're like, mom, they bring things up I don't even remember talking about. Right. So they're listening. Your job is to teach them, not to argue about food, not to fight with food, just teach them. And if they refuse to do it, just keep teaching them. So that's what the kit's about, is just to help you along the journey of really teaching yourself and your kids how to do this. Right. So there's recipes in there. There's actually a menu in there that, he just shows you that I don't want you cooking four different things because the kids are sitting there going, I'm not eating that. I want this, that you're right. going to stress yourself out. So I, I teach you how to like make one thing, but break it up a little bit for each one of us mm -hmm. or one of the kids. There's a quiz in there. That's a leaky gut quiz. It's a link to the quiz. Um, Cause the quiz is, is pretty in depth and you can see if you have one just through taking my quiz. Right. Um, there's a lab test review. Cause we talked about a lot, a lot of labs and you might be like, what's she talking about? What was that one test? So, there's a link to take you into an explanation of the labs. Got it. Um, I'll bring you over to the website where all the blog articles are. There's a whole autism section because I've done this and I've lived a pretty hard life getting him to um, behave mm -hmm. in school and focus. So there's articles in there about how to set up a, you know, a good team, how to fire people off your team, like people that are just like, don't like your kid. You know, I've had haircuts and dentists that I'm like, you're gone. You got to go. Um, that, you know, how to set the classroom up. There's how to make friends, um, because these kids are different. It's sometimes they don't fit in. Awesome. Um, so tons of recipes too. There's mm -hmm. a support group in there 
a link mm -hmm. to it that I have on Facebook. Um, again, my, I have lots of videos and there's actually webinars that I've taped and videoed on my Facebook page mm -hmm. um, that do need a little bit of updating, but they were, they were, they're, they're really good. There's an MTHFR webinar on there that wow. I will lead you through F, uh, MTHFR from beginning to end. So there's a lot there for yes, you. For sure. I mean, and it sounds like I, we should be paying for this stuff, but so, <laughs> you're, you're giving it away for free and we appreciate it because this is such valuable yeah. information. I mean, and what's going to work, on a kid with autism, uh, from a nutritional standpoint, is going to work with a kid with ADD or ADHD or, or sensory disorder or whatever. They all, it's all the same uh, yeah. process. It's all the same testing. It's all the same um, nutritional uh, behaviors and, and uh, recipes. Yes, yeah. So. There's also um, a one-hour consultation with me for $49. There's a link to it. And you would pay through PayPal, and then I, I personally will get the link, and I will personally respond to you. Um, so that's a half-off sale, because usually I'm about $99. Sometimes it runs $150, depending upon what we do. But um, So that's a good gift to you, too, because I really awesome. want to help. Keep it simple, though. We, we work on small steps. You know? don't, Excellent. Don't Excellent. let it overwhelm you, because that's not fun. <laughs> All right. Well, make sure you get the, the Gut Brain Connection Starter Kit. The link is below. It's free of charge. Um, uh, Lisa, say a way of saying thank you for, for uh, watching our program today. And uh, if you want to get a hold of Lisa, she's at Dr. Dr. Lisa, L-I-S-A, Sulcenti. I said it wrong earlier. Uh, that's S-U-L-S-E-N-T-I at gmail.com. And you can also see her at Dr. Lisa Sulcenti, um, dot com, which is... Uh, her website, right? Yep. And uh, don't forget, uh, she's got her book out there, uh, The Over Tilted uh, Child, which uh, we'll like show this. you again. Yeah, it looks like yeah. that. Yeah. Can they get it on Amazon? Is that where they find it? Yeah, it's there. It's okay, there. Awesome. Find that on Amazon. Yeah. And in, again, if you want to get a hold of Lisa, just send her a quick email and um, she'll be happy to help you, uh, help you to, you know, determine which tests to take, determine how to read the test, what recipes to have. How to make those phenomenal cookies. I can't wait to, to get that done. I mean, I don't like cooking, so I wish you'd just bring them over, but I'm just saying <laughs> you're good. You know? Don't, don't <laughs> make it. Not. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So thank you, everyone, for watching today. I hope this was valuable to you. Um, I know it was valuable to me, uh, myself. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be taking the test myself because I've seen some allergy stuff happening with me that's been weird lately, and it's like, you know, mm -hmm. I think we all can use this kind of uh, awareness about our own. Oh, yeah, I test uh, myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Okay, all right. Well, thank you again for for viewing this episode of the ADHD Toolbox, Lisa. Thank you for being on our show. Thanks for having me. Take care.